Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video. And today I want to talk about my favourite reread of 2022. I really, really love rereading books. I feel like it's always a really fun, rewarding, valuable thing to do. Um, and I do like to reflect on like what my best rereading experiences have been of a year, as well as my best reading experiences in general. So there are six books I wanted to talk about today, which I reread in 2022, which I had a really good rereading experience with. So these are, I'm saying, my favourite rereads of 2022, but that doesn't mean they are my favourite books that I reread in 2022. That means they're like the books that had the most like significant improvement on a review for me in 2022. For example, I reread all three of Wuthering Heights, Pride and Prejudice and North and South in um, 2022. Those three books are three of my favourite books of all time. They would all be in my top five books of all time. I think um, I love them hugely, um, but I'm not including them in this list because they were already massive favourites before I reread them. Um, but what I want to talk about in this video today is books where I liked them or I didn't like them that much, and then I reread them and my appreciation of them increased a lot. Um, so books where I've had a really good rereading experience because my opinion has slightly changed, because that's one of the greatest things I think about rereading. So I'll start off at number six, um, where I wanted to mention The Battle of Life by Charles Dickens. I'm holding up this, um, which is a collection of his Christmas books, because The Battle of Life is one of his Christmas stories. So I reread this in December um, because I was going on a podcast, the Charles Dickens Brain on Fire podcast hosted by Dominic Gerrard. I'll link the episode that I recorded with Dominic Gerrard down below. Um, we had a really great fun discussion about the Battle of Life. I had read the Battle of Life once before and I'd always quite enjoyed it, um, but I really liked rereading it for the purpose of going on a podcast, knowing I was going to be talking about it in depth because I read it like in detail and annotated it, um, which is really fun. Um, and it just kind of brought the story to life more more and made me think a bit harder about what it is I like about it. Um, I just had a really great rereading experience with it. The Battle of Life is one of Dickens' kind of more ambitious Christmas novellas. It takes place in kind of three acts over ten years, so we kind of skip several years between each section, and it basically focuses on the relationship between two sisters and their father, um, and various things that kind of come between them. It's a really great read. It is a little bit kind of like sentimental, but in a way that I feel works well for a Christmas story, so I would definitely recommend it. It's not hugely Christmassy, but um, the middle section is quite festive, so maybe one to save for next Christmas. The other five rereads I want to talk about today are all things that I read on audiobook, which is partly because I do love rereading on audiobook, and partly I think just because um, I tend to reread much more on audiobook than I do physically. I very rarely physically reread things, but if I'm rereading something, I do tend to listen to it. Um, so the next two books I want to talk about are both books by Wilkie Collins. Um, so I'll just talk about them together. So in 2022, I reread both The Woman in White and The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. I had read both of these before, but probably when I was... 15 or 16 years old, so quite a long time ago now. It was really nice to reread these, um, and I really loved both of them, and they are, I would say, two of my favourite Wilkie Collins books. Um, I just really enjoyed the experience of rereading them. Wilkie Collins is an author who I have a bit of a hit and miss relationship with. I love some of his books, I don't like other ones, but rereading The Woman in White and The Moonstone, I was so engaged in both of them, and I really do love them both, especially The Moonstone. Um, I do still occasionally have problems with um, the stuff, stuff in The Woman in White. Basically, I struggle with Wilkie Collins' gender stuff a lot. Um, and every now and then, just when I'm like really loving the book, he'll just say something that really annoys me. However, I do think these are both fantastic, gripping, powerful stories that use like multiple narrators in really interesting ways that are really engaging. And it was just really lovely to rediscover them, them being books that I you know, had read before but had basically forgotten nearly everything. I think I remembered who not to trust. And that was about it. Um, so it was really, really lovely to rediscover these. So The Woman in White tells a story of a man called Walter Hargrave, who is a drawing master. Um, and he is summoned to um, his new position to teach drawing to, to young women at a country house. But just before he leaves for his new position, he encounters on the road a mysterious woman in white um, who seems to have some kind of link to the place he is going to. And everything kind of goes on from there. It is mysterious and great. At its best, it is a dissection and a critique of the power dynamics within Victorian marriage. Sometimes it falls a bit short of that, but like at its best it is fantastic. And yeah, I'm so glad that I reread it. And then the Moonstone follows various characters who are all kind of connected by the disappearance of a diamond. Um, and we're following all of the characters who are affected by this. 
it's just a really fantastic story. I feel like the twists and turns of the plot, the characterization, the way Wilkie Collins uses multiple narrators, it's just great and I really, really recommend it. I love Wilkie Collins a lot and yeah, it was such a joy to reread both of these this year. At number three, I wanted to mention The Mayor of Casterbridge by Thomas Hardy. I reread this in October for our October group read and I just really, really loved it. I had read The Mayor of Casterbridge twice before but not for several years and I feel like I definitely liked it a lot more on this reread. I feel like previously The Mayor of Casterbridge had always been one of those Thomas Hardy books, a bit like Chester Durbville's, where I really respected it and I thought it was great, but I didn't love it as much as a lot of other Thomas Hardy books. But I feel like rereading The Mayor of Casterbridge this time, I really did love it. And I feel like maybe one of the reasons why I didn't love it previously is because the characters are slightly harder to like. There isn't really like a character you're rooting for in the same way as in Far From The Madden Crowd or The Return of the Native or Desperate Remedies or, you know, Jude the Obscure or The Woodlanders. Like, I just felt like there wasn't someone I really was rooting for in The Mayor of Casterbridge. But reading it this time, I did feel differently, especially about the character of Elizabeth Jane, who I found really interesting. And I feel like Michael Hinchard is just such a fantastically created character that even where this book is kind of frustrating and even when he is maddening, it's still such a wonderful reading experience and the characterization and the writing is just so rich. So I just really, really loved it this time. And listening to it on audiobook was great. I need to listen to more Hardy on audiobook. I need to reread more Hardy. If you don't know, this book follows the story of Michael Henchard who when he is 20 years old gets very very drunk at a country fair and sells both his wife and daughter many many years later um, when he has turned his life around and become the mayor of Casterbridge his past comes back to haunt him and everything goes on from there it's really really fantastic so rich and powerful and what a book really it's so good I'm so glad that I reread this this year at number two my second best rereading experience of the year was the Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens again I didn't read this physically I listened to it on audiobook um, as the first book in my Mega Dickens read-along that I'm doing at the moment. For the Mega Dickens read-along, we are reading all the work from Charles Dickens in publication order, starting off with the Pickwick Papers back in October and November, going right through to September 2024, reading all of Dickens' novels in publication order, which is just a delight so far. Um, and I really, really loved rereading the Pickwick Papers, and I really loved listening to it. I'd never listened to an audiobook before, though it was my third or fourth reading, and I just had such a great fun time with this. The Pickwick Papers has always been a Dickens book that I've liked, but has always been like quite low down my ranking, um, partly because it has this kind of episodic structure. It's basically just this story about these group of friends traveling around England to get into various scrapes, kind of focusing on the relationship between Mr. Pickwick and his manservant, Sam Weller, who is my favorite character. And I always really liked the Pickwick Papers, but I feel like reading it this time, it just like shot up in my estimation because it's so fun and funny and ridiculous in like all the best ways. Some of the characterization is completely bizarre and bonkers but I just loved it and I just had like such a good time rereading it listening to it on audiobook just like laughing aloud at all the ridiculousness of it I just thought it was such good fun so this has definitely been a rereading highlight of the year but finally my best reread of 2022 would have to go to Sense of Sensibility by Jane Austen Sense of Sensibility has always been my least favorite Jane Austen it has always been a way down the bottom of the list um I have read it multiple times because I love Jane Austen a lot so I continue read her books and the last time I reread Sense and Sensibility before 2022 it went up a little bit in my estimation and I was like oh, okay maybe I do like it more than Northanger Abbey but it's still pretty low down at the bottom of the list and then I reread Sense and Sensibility in Jane Austen July 2022 um, shortly after having read a book called The Genius of Jane Austen by Paula Byrne uh, which is about kind of theatre and Jane Austen but has a fantastic essay within it about Sense and Sensibility which really kind of changed the way I was thinking about Sense and Sensibility and then I reread Sense and Sensibility and I just I just fell in love with it. I made a whole video about this which I'll link down below because I don't need to go on about it for an age here but I just fell in love with Sense and Sensibility this year in a way that I never had before and suddenly after multiple reads of it I got it and I loved it and it was fantastic and it's interesting because Mantle Park is my second favourite Jane Austen and I feel like I have thought for a long time. Everyone misunderstands about the park. It's so good. Um, you have to read it not as a love story and then it's fantastic. That's not what it's about. And I have kind of felt like that about Mansfield Park for ages, but it never really occurred to me to read Sense and Sensibility like that. Um, and I feel like just this you read a Sense and Sensibility you know, forgetting the love stories, thinking about the stuff that Sense Sensibility is really about. Just focusing on the sibling relationships um, and the kind of character arcs. I just thought it was wonderful and just suddenly clicked into place. So yes, it was so great. If 
you don't know, Sense Sensibility it tells the story of um, two young women, Eleanor and Marianne, their sisters, and at the beginning of the book, their father passes away, leaving them and their mother and their younger sister um, struggling for money. And we kind of follow them and the circumstances that follow their leaving their home um, and moving to Devon. And like I said, something just clicked this time, and I just fell in love with it in a way I have never done before, um, and it just shot up in my estimation. So what a great reread of Sense Sensibility this year. Definitely my best reading experience of the year. Massive kind of improvement in how I feel about Sense Sensibility and it was just great. And this is why rereading is one of the best things ever. So that's all I wanted to say for today. Just a few books I wanted to mention that I had a really wonderful rereading experience with in 2022. Please do let me know down in the comments, did you reread anything in 2022? What was your best reread of the year? And that's all. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video. Thank you.